All right, we're going to continue lesson 24 with uh, one more example of a transportation problem called the transshipment problem. And this is a problem where, uh, it, as you might imagine, think, uh, really large distribution networks like Walmart or Target, that you see these uh, huge warehouses where um, tractor trailer trucks are coming in, dropping off their, uh, their, their uh, goods, and then those are reloaded onto other trucks going out. And that point, those big warehouses where that occurs is a transshipment point. And so this is a very practical problem in, in many um, different kinds of settings. But it has, interestingly, it's a transportation problem, uh, as you might imagine, but it has exactly the same structure. Uh, and so we're going to look at an example and solve one of these in Excel. And so let's dive in. Again, this is our uh, seaboard trucking problem uh, that you remember. And just again, real quickly, uh, the structure is our, our, our origin, our destination locations. We have six of those. Um, trucks can go from each of the three origins to each of the three destinations. And so there's a, um, there's nine different decision variables just described by or shown by correspond to the, to the arrows. We, uh, went through and formulated in the objective function with nine different terms. It's a maximization problem. And then each one of our nations, our, our uh, origins and our destination had a constraint associated with it. And so that was the structure of our transportation problem. Well, now we've got this problem. This is a problem from your textbook on page 472. So you can uh, follow along there and go back and read, read that problem. Uh, it also shows you how to solve this problem uh, in your in Excel as well. So lots of different sources. Let me uh, familiarize with the problem. What we're doing is we're uh, shipping potatoes from Nebraska and from Colorado to either of these locations, Chicago, St. Louis, or Cincinnati. But what happens here is in the middle, in these three locations, Kansas City, Omaha, and Des Moines, potatoes come into Kansas City and there they're uh, offloaded and reloaded onto trucks and sh shipped from Kansas City to either Chicago, St. Louis, or Cincinnati. Omaha is another transshipment point where those potatoes then can be sent to Chicago, St. Louis, or Cincinnati, and then the same thing for Des Moines. So the trucks come in from Nebraska to Des Moines, offload their potatoes, and then they're reloaded onto trucks that go to either Chicago, St. Louis, or Cincinnati. Now, again, I want you to see, uh, oh, and I'll point out too, uh, there's 300 tons of potatoes in, in Nebraska, 300 tons available in Colorado, no more. And Chicago has to get 200 tons, at least St. Louis, 100 tons, and Cincinnati, at least 300 tons. And these, these numbers that you see uh, in, in, these, this, in this problem, these are costs. So for every ton of potatoes that goes from Nebraska to Kansas City, it costs $16 and so forth. So that's the structure of the problem. Now what I want you to do is to take a minute and determine how many decision variables we have in this problem. Hopefully you would see that we have 15 decision variables. We've got six decision variables that are associated with Nebraska and Colorado, three, six. And then for Kansas City, Omaha, and Des Moines, there's nine decision variables. Another, there's three, six, nine decision variables. 
So a total, in this case, of 15 decision variables, which again, each one of these lines represent a decision variable. By a similar token, I hope you can anticipate how many constraints will we have. I'm gonna let you think about that for just a few seconds. And hopefully you would realize that we have eight, we're gonna have eight constraints plus our non-negativity, but there's gonna be two constraints that are associated with our origins. There's gonna be three constraints, one of each associated with our destination, or excuse me, our transshipment points, and three with our destination. So that means, of course, that's some, um, that's eight different constraints that we're going to have to wrestle with. So we're, we're ready now to formulate this problem. All right, so we, as we said, we're, we're here are uh, uh, a reduced form of our network. And again, you said, as I said, we're gonna have uh, 15, 15 decision variables. So there's gonna be 15. And you'll notice also that I've changed uh, the notation just a little bit, again, to uh, help us um, uh, determine or easily put together the problem. So again, uh, just to get us started, for example, NK is going to be the number of tons of potatoes shipped. Um, Nebraska to K. I'm just going to abbreviate KC. So that's one of our one of our decision variables. And again, we have 15 of those. So rather than instead of listing all 15 out, we're going to use again our index uh, I. We're going to say the variable IJ is going to be equal to the number of tons potatoes shipped from location I to location J. And I want you to, to, to notice something that the, the order of shipment makes CD is not the same as DC. The CD is shipping potatoes from Colorado to Des Moines, but DC would be shipping potatoes from Des Moines to Colorado, and they're not they're not the same. So the the order is important. And I'll, the other thing to notice is now that since we have these transshipment points, our set for indices for I. It's going to be of uh, include in it's Nebraska include Colorado. It's going to include Kansas City. It's going to include Omaha, and it's going to include Des Moines because there that's those are the locations we can ship from. The locations we can ship to are our J values or in the C's for J. We can ship to Kansas City. Omaha, Des Moines. We can also ship to Chicago. We can ship to oops, Chicago, uh, St. Louis, or Cincinnati. And so those are our locations that we can ship from. And these are our locations that we can ship to. So those are our, how we would define our uh, 15 uh, decision variables with these terms here. And each one of these will represent one of these uh, arcs in our, in our network, all right? So now let's go to the objective function. And these, are, again, are our costs. And I don't know if I specified, but in this case, for sure, we this is not a maximization problem. 
our objective in this problem is to minimize some cost because these are costs on, on these um, values. Uh, so we're going to specify our objective function min z, which is cost. And that's going to be equal to, and this, this is going to have 15 terms. And so the first term would be 16 times decision variable in k plus 10 times our decision variable in O plus 12 times our decision variable in D plus, and then we would do the same thing for Colorado, and then also within for Kansas City, it would be $6 times shipping from Kansas City to Chicago plus $8 times the shipping from Kansas City to St. Louis. And we do all of that same thing for Omaha. We do the same thing for Des Moines, all the way down to Cincinnati, where we would be for, for $12 is what it would cost us to ship a, a ton of potatoes from Des Moines to Cincinnati. So that objective function, this is just one, two, one, two, three, four, five, just six terms. But this is this is the formulation for the objective function for this for this problem. Okay. 15, 15 terms. If uh, in a, an exam situation, if you get like this and there's 15 variables and, and you write down enough of the terms that I know what, what you mean, then that's perfectly satisfactory rather than writing out all of those terms. Okay. Now let's look at the constraints. As we said before, we're going to have eight constraints. We're still going to have, we're still going to have supply constraints as in our transportation problems and we're also and we're also going to have our demand constraints so let's look at the supply constraints hopefully you can see right away that we've got three different ways to ship potatoes out of nebraska and we have at most 300 uh, tons of potatoes. The same thing for Colorado, three ways to ship out, but then there's at most there's 300 tons of potatoes. And then at our demand locations, for example, for Chicago, there's three ways to receive potatoes, but and, and in this case we need to have at least 200 tons of potatoes. We can't have fewer than that our demand here we have to have at least 100 we have to have at least 300 potatoes in cincinnati and this is how they can come in to those locations so these are going to be similar uh, and so for our except in this case we're only going to have two supply constraints so let me for uh, uh for these two for nebraska to kansas city plus the nebraska to omaha plus Nebraska to Des Moines has to be uh, less than or equal to 300 tons. Well, it also, for uh, Colorado to Kansas City, plus Colorado to Omaha, plus Colorado to Des Moines, has to be less than or equal to 300, whoops, less than or equal to 300 tons for potatoes. And that's our, these are our supply, two supply constraints. Now, similarly for our demand constraints, where do we have to ask yourself, where do potatoes come to Chicago? Well, they come from Kansas City to Chicago. 
and they come to from Omaha to Chicago. They come from Des Moines to Chicago. And we have to have at least 200 tons. So that's an example of a demand, one of the demand constraints. And then for St. Louis, from Kansas City to St. Louis, from Omaha to St. Louis, and then from Des Moines to St. Louis, and we have to have at least 100, 110, but 100. And then finally, from Kansas City to Cincinnati, Omaha to Cincinnati, and Des Moines to Cincinnati. And we have to have at least lots of potatoes, at least 300 in Cincinnati. So then now the question in your mind, and it should become, and it may hopefully by now, is what in the world happens here? And this is where you need to think a little bit carefully about what's going on here. And let's just focus for a minute on, on Kansas City. What happens in, I'm gonna erase the, all this so we can, what happens in just Kansas City? All right, what happens? Potatoes come into Kansas City and potatoes leave Kansas City. Um, they come in on these two paths and they leave on one of the one or more of these three paths. So what happens there in Kansas City to these potatoes that come in and that leave? Well, what you're going to see, and hopefully you can think about this, we're going to call these in the middle of these transshipment. These are going to be balance constraints. They're balance. And if you, if you think about it, whatever comes in to, in this case, Kansas City has to equal to whatever goes out of Kansas City. And that's going to help us as we uh, construct construct our construct these three constraints. Right? So let's take a look at what's coming in to Kansas City. Well, potatoes come to Kansas City from Nebraska. They come to Kansas City from Colorado. But these are the potatoes that go in and then they have to equal the potatoes that leave out. So they leave and they go from Kansas City to Chicago. They go from Kansas City to St. Louis, and they go from Kansas City to Cincinnati. And so, again, these, these are the potatoes These are the potatoes that are in to Kansas City, and then these are the potatoes that are coming out of Kansas City. So let's finish these three constraints. Then for Omaha, Potatoes come into Omaha from Nebraska and from Colorado. Potatoes go out from Omaha to Chicago, Omaha to St. Louis, and from Omaha to Cincinnati. Well, you can see the pattern form in from Des Moines potatoes come to Des Moines from Nebraska and from Colorado and they go to uh, Chicago go to St. Louis and they go to finally Cincinnati Oop. Cincinnati so those are our balance uh, constraints so we've got three three sets of constraints 
we've got the cassettes of constraints that are associated with our supply. We've got our set of constraints that are associated with the demand. And then we now we have these new sets of constraints that are associated with balance constraints. All right. And so now we're ready to look at the full formulation of this problem. And this is uh, the only thing we didn't mention before was certainly non-negativity. We don't ever want to forget these. Um, and so we have the complete full formulation of this transshipment problem where we're shipping potatoes from Nebraska and Colorado through to Chicago, St. Louis, and Cincinnati through either Kansas City, Omaha, or Des Moines. And in the next video, we're going to show how to formulate uh, that problem. And again, this is the same process to solve. And just like with the previous, uh, after the after this is over, I'm going to show you the, the solver window that's associated with this transshipment problem. Again, the unique format has a, has a certain things that will help us solve uh, solve this problem uh, in Excel. Okay, that concludes this video, and we'll have one more on solution. Uh, Excel solution for transshipment in lesson 24. As always, call me, email me if you need to, if you have any questions.